Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay, and today I have the Viltrox 28mm f1.8 lens. Now, they make this for the Sony E-mount and the Nikon Z-mount. Now, this is a full-frame lens, so I'm going to be testing it on my new Sony A7C II, but like I said, this is also compatible with the Nikon Z-mount camera, so like the Z8, Z9, things like that. Now, this lens actually goes for $379, which is pretty affordable, considering it's fairly wide angle and it has a fast max aperture of f1.8. Now this lens also has really good quality elements in there, so the corner sharpness is excellent, as you will see in the lab testing photos I'll show you in a second. Now just getting a closer look at the lens, you can see it does have the manual aperture ring here. It's not clicked, so it's just a smooth spin there. Now it does have quite a bit of resistance, so it's gonna be pretty hard to turn by accident and it does have a slight locking feel when you go into the auto mode. Now when you have it in the A mode, that will allow you to control the aperture on the camera. If you have it off A mode, the camera is then gonna default to whatever that number is. So keep that in mind, if your aperture is not changing on your camera, it's probably because the aperture ring turned off auto. Now, the lens body is all metal, and it feels pretty good. It's actually a lot lighter weight than I was expecting. It only weighs 12.9 ounces or 369 grams. Now the focus ring feels pretty darn good. Nice feedback on the focus ring and I like how it's fairly large so it's easy to grab. The lens hood here is very tight. That I don't really like the way the lens hood feels um, but that'll probably break in with time. But as it is right now, it is just a little bit tight. Now it has a pinch style lens cap there, and you can see here on the front, we're looking at a 55 millimeter filter thread there. So take that off. Now looking at the back here, you can see we have a nice metal lens bayonet, and we also have the USB-C port here for firmware updates. Now there is no rubber gasket back here, so I'm gonna say, you know, weather sealing, not the greatest on this lens considering there's no rubber gasket. But overall build quality does feel pretty good. Like I said, it, it is lighter than I expected um, and smaller considering the 28 millimeter. Now, 28 millimeter is kind of a weird focal length. You know, 24 millimeter is very common, 35 millimeter very common, 50 millimeter for example. But when you get into like the 28 millimeters, the 40 millimeters, they're a little bit less common. So what interests me about the 28 millimeter in particular is what you're seeing right now. So I'm using the Zeiss Battis lens and it's a 25 millimeter lens. What I was using before the Zeiss Battis was my Sony 35 millimeter f1.8 lens. Now the 35 millimeter, it crops in way tighter. So you only see like a little bit of the desk the baddest is 25 millimeter f2, so the background is looking a little bit sharper than it would if I was using a 35 millimeter. So let's throw on the 28 millimeter and see what that looks like in the studio because that's really what I wanted to try out with this lens. All right, guys, so now I'm recording with the Viltrox 28 millimeter f1.8 lens, and you can see it's a little bit tighter of a crop, and the background separation is a little bit better because it's at f1.8. Now, I do have a variable ND filter on the front of the lens, um, you know, just to make sure the exposure is correct with the lighting and stuff in the studio, just so you are aware. But uh, again, you know, this crop is pretty perfect for my studio. This is like exactly what I want. The 25 millimeter is just a little bit wider than I want. And at F2, it's, you know, a little slower as well. Just for reference quickly, I just wanted to show you quick what the Zeiss Battis lens looks like. You can see how fat it is, the 25 millimeter. F2. Uh, this is what it looks like here, just on the A7C2. Move that out of the way. See there? It's gonna cover my face, nice and smooth. So you can see there, the focus works really well, and it is very quiet. So you know, it, it's definitely doing the job, and it's doing it well, if you ask me. You know, so it's quiet for studio purposes. It does focus, it tracks on the eye, and it's very sharp. So we're looking pretty good, I gotta say, so far for this lens as far as the cost goes um, to quality ratio, especially when considering full frame coverage. So if this was a crop factor lens, it would be like, okay, it's crop factor, but for full frame coverage, 
this is pretty good, I gotta say. All right, let me throw the 35 millimeter lens on here just so you can see for reference what the crop looks like at 35 versus 28 versus the 25 millimeter baddest lens that I showed you a minute ago. Guys, one other thing I just wanted to show you quick is this awesome Falcam wrist strap. Falcam actually just sent this to me to try out and I'm really impressed with their design. They have like this magnetic connector here that you can just put around whatever you want. You know, in my case, obviously it's this camera, um, but they give you a bunch of these and this magnetic thing just snaps right into this clip. So you might have seen like peak design and stuff like that over the years. This is like a similar style, but it's just super easy to take on and off and it's not going to fall off because it's magnetic. And then you can put your wrist in there like so and just cinch it up. And now you have a nice cinched up wrist strap like you see here. So this is pretty sweet. All right, guys, so now I'm recording with the 35 millimeter f1.8 lens and you can see just how much tighter of a crop it is. Also note the background separation here is looking pretty good. All right, guys, let's go over some sample photos and I just wanna show you some lab testing photos as well as some focus transition testing that I did in the lab. All right, guys, so here we are looking at the lab testing photos. Now, first thing I wanted to show you was the profile lens correction here so you can see what this looks like with no correction. So right here unchecked, you can see the vignetting and distortion is, you know, it's there. The vignetting's pretty significant, but the distortion's not too bad. Now, if I zoom in here on the image at 100%, you can see the sharpness is really good. Now, this is wide open at f1.8. And again, I was using the Sony a7C II. This is a raw file, and I didn't make any other adjustments to the image. So you can see here, Corner sharpness is very good on this lens. Yeah, sharpness is really good, really good. I do see a little bit of fringing here, guys, around the bokeh balls here, a little bit of green. I do see a little bit of red here. Let me go to 200%. You can see a little bit better, a little bit of red fringing and the green on the bokeh balls there. So that's not too bad, but it is what it is. So now if we just go through the apertures here, here's f2.8, and we'll see if the fringing goes away. Let's still see just a tiny bit of green, but it's a little better. And you can see the sharpness and contrast did pick up a little bit at f2.8 compared to f1.8. You can see here, f1.8, f2.8, and here's f4. Now if I zoom into f4, let's see, it's looking pretty good. And that fringing has gone away. I don't see any fringing at F4. So stop down F4, cleaned up really nice. Now if we just keep going here, this is all the way down to F8. There's F11 and F16. So now if I zoom in on F16, you can see there, it's looking pretty good, still very sharp. So the minimum focus distance is about 14 and a half inches or about 37 centimeters or so. And you can see here, that's as close as I could get to the quarter. So minimum focus distance isn't the greatest on this lens. I definitely would love to be able to get closer to the subject, but you know, it's not bad, it's not terrible. Um, but you know, I would like it to be more like five, six, seven, eight inches, you know what I mean? That would be nice so you can get really close to subjects, get more magnification. So this is what we're looking at. Now, if we zoom in here to 100%, you can see there is a little bit of red fringing on the nose there. Is this 200%? Let me see. Let me go to 200%. Yeah, so 200% here, you can see there is just that little bit of fringing. So if we go to f2.8, they're still there a little bit. And at f4, pretty much goes away. There's just a very, very tiny amount there that you can see. And you can see the bokeh balls here. Uh, looking pretty good. They are starting to octagon just that little bit. But let me go back to f1.8 so you can see the round bouquet balls there with a little bit of fringing. All right, so let me show you some of the video from the lab testing and then we'll go to the real world photos.
All right, guys, so looking at the real world photos here, I was just walking around at work, taking a couple of snapshots here, trying to test out this lens here. And this is very low light, and I just wanted to show you the background, you know, rendering here. It looks pretty cool with this test meter with the LED lights uh, in the background. Here's just one snapshot. Here's looking down an aisle just for that, you know, perspective. Uh, there you can see, looks pretty cool. Here's just a thermostat. So here's just one looking down at a fan and you can see that depth of field blur falls off really nicely. Now here's one outside of a fire extinguisher and I just took this with the sign in the background so you can see that separation with the trees and everything and the house back there. It's looking pretty good and you can see just how sharp this is on the hydrant itself. Very good detail, color, clarity, and so forth. Now here's one just looking into some like weeds growing there and you can see, you know, just that separation and depth of field, it's pretty good. Now here's one looking at a brick wall and I just focused on the sill here so you can see that depth of field fall off. Now here's another one looking at a grate, again just showing you that depth of field and here you can see how the fringing, you know, is pretty good. You can see just there's a little bit of green here and then there's a little bit of you know, orangey red here. But overall, I would say it's very well controlled, especially when you factor in the cost of this lens. Now here's one just looking at a brick wall. And here's another one. Just wanted to show you the brick wall so you can get a better sense of distortion and stuff like that. And if I enable, enable the profile correction, you can see how it fixes it that little bit. Let me show you this one as well. You can see there. I went to Eddie's with my brother yesterday and I took this shot. I thought this was kind of cool. Just using the, you know, the glass roof. And uh, here's Eddie's Roadhouse. Looks like they got to touch up some of the paint there on the uh, sign. But anyway, we went inside. Here's Darius. He's awesome. So that was always fun. Got a snapshot of him. They had this really good Hudson Valley Sour, Hudson Valley Brewery Company. And this is a sour. So I just took a shot of this with the background blur at the bar so you can get a sense of what you can do with a lens like this. Now again, I wish I was able to get a little bit closer to this so the background separation would be a little bit more. You can see how much I cropped in on this shot just as an example because I was so far away. Same with this one. I had to crop in quite a bit um, to get the frame that I wanted. But, you know, still really good and 33 megapixel is a lot on this sensor on the a7c2 so we have plenty of cropping uh, real estate there you know what i mean this was chipotle this was chipotle uh, chicken parm man was it good really really good now my brother got this uh, delicious pulled pork burrito and uh, you can see there looked pretty darn good now just looking down at a coaster here i thought this coaster was kind of cool with the frog and then here's just um, a picture of the grip that I just put on. This is an Ergon grip that I just put on this mountain bike that I'm uh, currently testing. This is the Polygon T6E, uh, which is a, you know, electric mountain bike. A lot of fun. Just put these grips on there because uh, they're just way better. It has this little cushiony part for your hand. So I'm getting ready to uh, hit the trails on this beast. All right, guys. So if you're looking for a fairly wide angle lens with a pretty good max aperture of f1.8, the Viltrox 28mm is a pretty good option, I would say. The sharpness is very good in the corners. There is a little bit of fringing. I definitely saw some like purple fringing and some green fringing um, wide open. Um, but once you stop down a little bit, that does go away. So, and then at f1.8 that you're looking at right now in the studio environment, you don't really notice it. It's just, you know, if you're doing something shiny, uh, the specular highlights, you will see it a little bit on the bouquet balls, that fringing just a little bit. But like I said, you stop down a little bit, that kind of goes away. And you do have to factor in the cost of this lens, $379. You are gonna get a little bit of fringing, usually at that price point in high contrast areas. So that's worth noting. But, you know, in the real world, as you saw from the sample photos and from the video testing, transition testing that I showed you, this lens performs really well. And as you can see in the studio environment here, like I'm using it on my a7 IV and it's doing a really good job. So food for thought. I think this is a really good value for the money. Build quality is pretty darn good. Metal focus nice and smooth, the manual focus ring. So that's nice. I do wish it had a rubber gasket on the backside where it meets up with the camera for better weather sealing. 
but again, the price point, you know, $379. Same thing with the uh, manual aperture. Uh, it would be nice to have a click declick option, but you know, $379, that lower price point, you tend to not get those features. So, all right guys, that about wraps up this video. I really hope you got what you were looking for. And if you did, if you can give me a thumbs up, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, it'd be super cool if you subscribed. All right, I'll catch up with you guys next time. Links below in the description area and please feel free to ask questions if you have them. All right, have a great day guys. Take care.